Hey, what's good, people? Zensphere here. Uh, I'm going to be working on this track here. I just thought I'd record it. Maybe there'll be something useful for somebody. Um, yeah, let's hear what we got so far. And my CPU is probably going to crack just because <clears throat> video recording and playing Renoise is apparently too much for it. And so be it. If it gets too obnoxious, then I'll just fucking stop. track is a work in progress probably do some arrangements uh, a little composition today maybe some sound design aiming for sort of a dark progressive vibe we got 128 on the bpm As usual, this is all uh, native Renoise sound design. No plugins. what I got so far. Um, I think what I want to do, I've got this second drop section, uh, which I've marked out here. Uh, this probably needs more repetition, needs to be fleshed out, um, transitions and stuff like that. But I think what I'm going to do today right now, at least, is get started on a third drop. So I'm just going to select this chunk and duplicate it. Oops, that didn't work. Uh, select this whole chunk. It's a nice thing here. If you, uh, if you click with the mouse wheel, um, you bring focus to the pattern arranger. And if you click on these uh, divisions between sections, it selects the whole section. Um, so then you can use a uh, key command. I use command D to duplicate. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go ahead and write this drop three. Um, and let's take out all our synths. And we'll just deal with the percussion section. I think for this part, I want um, more of a driving uh, side bass. So I'm going to take out kind of the, the prog swell bass and we'll just work with, uh, what we got here. So I want to fill in some bass notes and I think just to start, I'm probably gonna just do a, a straight fill. I'm going to copy this section, go up uh, to the top here and we'll just paste that. Okay, now I think I might want to change keys here. Yeah, let's let's drop it down. We'll make it a little darker. Um, what we'll do when I got the uh, track focused, you can use Shift and uh, F1 to uh, decrease the note. Um, Shift is a modifier that affects uh, all the notes in the track in the pattern. Um, whereas like option, at least on a Mac would, uh, impact the selection. <clears throat> so I'm just going to hit shift F1 and we'll bring this down and let's try dropping it down a whole step here. Uh, that sounds good. Let's try going a little lower. Nah, I want to see just a half step, what a half step sounds like. I think I want to go with the whole step. So we're moving to D sharp. OK, 
Okay, so I think that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to bring this to another uh, track because I think I want to um, change my instrument actually. So I'm going to bring another, um, I'm going to duplicate here. So now I've got this uh, Sybase Staccato duplicated and I'm just going to rename this so um, <clears throat> there's less confusion. We'll go dark uh, Sybase. And let's swap our instrument out. So we'll go to our advanced editor. Oops. And what the fuck am I doing here? Okay, let's open this up. Select the track. Um, let's do track in pattern instrument source instrument. We're at 10 and then we're going to remap to 11 and we'll just hit remap. So now this is, you can see this is now triggering instrument 11 and we can work with the uh, sound design. I'm just going to loop this block here and let's get into our uh, instrument here. And modulation section. I think I want to change the uh, character here. We'll bring this down. Mm, I think I want that a little smaller. Maybe bring in some distortion. I'll solo this here, how it sounds. And let's get into our effects section and work with the compression here. Check out our sends. See our spectrum analyzer. have to bump this up a little bit. Let's hear how that transition sounds. Yeah, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bump the compression here. Still want that uh little bit of attack to bring the transient through. Sounds like it's hitting about right. I'm working on headphones because uh, the microphone. <clears throat> so I'll have to adjust this in the monitors once I actually get there. It's still not hitting quite hard enough. I think I need to open up the uh, filter. So I'm going to do that with the decay time. Sounds about right. I think that needs to be a little louder, but I'm going to have to do this work on the monitors. Uh, headphones aren't going to cut it here. And let's just drop this down. And we're going to take this hi-hat pattern for this whole section. I want to change my open hat a little bit. And we're just going to use this uh, kind of shorter, shorter one. Oops. Propagate. That. And maybe I'll go for a straight 
right now I've got kind of a, a house, excuse me, <clears throat> a house swing on my closed hats, uh, but I think I'm going to take that out. So let's do, 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 do this. Um, option Z and option A are awesome. Uh, you can, it basically selects everything up or down uh, relative to the cursor position. So if you need to, <clears throat> you know, select, it, it comes in handy all the time. Uh, so I'm just going to X that out. All right. Now it's straight, not swung. Bring this down. And I'm just going to change the color here so we can see uh, what's going on. Let's go for dark blue. And we'll bring in a different snare pattern. And we'll bring in a uh, kind of a swung hit here. Yeah, I don't want it on that hit. I want it here. I think we'll bring the volume down a little bit, not too much. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and I'll change this color. Uh, let's go with, what do we got here? It's already sort of gray. Let's go with just sort of a brown. Okay. And then we'll do a little snare uh, fill here. Make it a little more staccato. And let's do 8642. Might be fun to bring the pitch up, so let's try that. Um, let's just go minor third, fifth octave, and I don't, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, that sounds all right. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to bring this down, copy. All right, so that last hit is too quiet. Let's change that to four. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> you can play from cursor position with shift, uh, shift and spacebar. So you don't have to start from the beginning of the pattern. If you don't know that, you should know that because it's good. I'll duplicate this out. All right, sounds good. Uh, good enough for now. I might put in some variation in the bass, um, maybe in um, a second drop pattern. Um, <clears throat> but for now, we'll just keep working on this. I think I want to do some sound design. I'm going to grab an empty track. Let me just check out my mixer, see what I got here. Is nine occupied? Is there anything on nine? Mm, looks like nine is empty. And uh, I think I want to do like some kind of crunchy lead type thing. Um, so let's get a new instrument slot. And I'm just going to create a few more empty instruments here. I got a hotkey set up for that. I can delete and uh, add instruments uh, from the instrument box. And uh, I think I want sort of a noise lead. I'm actually just gonna take off record just so I don't fuck it up. And let's, um, uh, let's fuck with harmonics here. This is a, a tool by Mark Black, a uh, dope little tool for additive synthesis in Renoise. It's an additive synth uh, waveform generator. Uh, if you don't have it, you should get it. It makes a lot of nice sounds. Very flexible, very adaptable. 
Um, let's see. I wonder if I want my fundamental. I think I'm going to take out the fundamental. Well, all right, let's just see what we got. I think I'm just going to morph some shit. Loop it. Hmm. Try taking out the fundamental. Yeah, this might sound all right. Uh, I'm going to drop it down an octave. And we'll add some distortion. Sounds cool. Normalize it. So we moved from F down to D sharp. Um, I'm going to, as per usual, probably throw a bandpass filter on this biatch. And here's a little technique I like to use for animation in noise leads. Um, we will create an LFO. And we'll create a second LFO, random LFO. Tie a macro to D phase on our sine LFO. Uh, create an effects chain, create a second effects chain, open up a doofer, throw a macro control knob on that shit, and we'll bump this up. So now it's starting from a different point in the sine wave uh, with each key press. And I'm just gonna label this so I know what's going on in case I need to know what's going on later. So you can see this D phase shifting. So that starts me at a different point <clears throat> in the sine wave with each key press. Uh, I think I want some frequency modulation as well. So I'm gonna tie that to a macro. And we don't want it too fast. Let's try five Hertz and we'll try this. Uh, let's do one Hertz. And let's see what our range it looks like. And we'll do this LFO rate and do to do to do, do, do. I'm gonna tie go to phrases bring in a probabilistic phrase we'll do gate rando because this has um, probability triggers on the gates as well these note off events will trigger probabilistically so some notes will be as long as um, a quarter note and as short as uh, whatever 128th note i think i want a little bigger sweep here Sounds all right. Bump the resonance a little bit. See how the drive sounds. Might put some distortion on it uh, in the effect chain here. Because it's not distorted enough, right? Fuck. All right, let's see how this sounds with... Uh, I'm going to put my quantize on beat here. Sounds all right for a uh, beginning phase here. And let's just get a note event on there. Get our D sharp four. I want a little variation in the release time, so I'm gonna um, automate that as well. 
amp release. <clears throat> and let's set our range to something usable here. Um, let's do 100 milliseconds. See if this sounds good. And go back to our macro control doofer, enable key tracking, enable the LFO, turn the amplitude up. So you do this via, via clock. Uh, that makes sense, actually, uh, because then it's a quarter of the beat. Or a little, little tighter. Okay, uh, let's see what we want to do with the effect chain. I like to uh, break up my modulation effect chains and my signal processing effect chains. I usually don't label them, but sometimes I will. Um, so yeah, let's see, what do we want here? Let's throw an exciter on this. Throw a flanger on it. So I'm going to look up um, my key of D. Uh, let's see if I can fucking do this. Oh, you know what? Maybe I've got it. I think I've got it saved here. Let's see. Pitch time data. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, D, D's nuts, where's D sharp? So that'd be E flat, uh, target frequency in Hertz. We want target period in milliseconds. So 51.426, that's gonna be way too slow. Um, this chart, I'd jump on the internet, but I'd probably just break OBS. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to do some fucking math. All right. Uh, let's do this. Pull up our calculator. And what was our number again? E flat is 51.426. So 51.426 divided by, let's do four, equals 12.8565. So that's what we want. So 12.856 or 857. Let's hear how that sounds. So I think I want to modulate this uh, flanger amount as well. So I'm gonna tie that to a macro and modulate that for more variation. I like the sound of the negative feedback, so that's how we're gonna do. Yeah, 
Okay, I'm gonna throw a ping pong delay on this. <clears throat> Actually, I think I want an auto repeater as well. So this auto repeater is uh, a repeater device um, that I've kind of time synced to the playhead um, and I'm just triggering with some LFOs. Uh, I time synced it using this formula device with this Y equals playing formula, um, triggering the Hydra input. Hydra input is triggering uh, LFO resets to sync up my LFOs. And then I've got some macros tied to uh, different parameters so I can kind of impact how the patterns are moving. Sounds pretty good right out of the gate, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, throw a ping pong delay on here because fucking it's side trans. Uh, let's try this guy. Way too much. Wouldn't be side trans if it wasn't way too much, right? Let's bring our length down, feedback down, send amount down. I just want to listen to the solo. compress it um, after the repeater. Um, so let's grab our compressor, throw this in here. I'm going to turn the um, beginning signal down just so we have a little more range on our compression. Um, let's drop this by, let's just do six. Way too fucking loud, but we'll fix that. Okay. There's some more compression on there, throw a shelving unit on there. Bring this up here. We got all this low frequency competition, we don't want that. Rename our instrument, call it noise lead. I don't think we have a noise lead yet.
All right, cool. I think I'm going to shut the video off now uh, just because I'm not quite sure where I want to go next, but I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, yeah, hit me up in the comments if you got any questions or want to see something in particular. All right, peace.